Today Famous. Allstate Glory Days, the legends of the 85 Chicago Bears is brought to you by Allstate. Dollar for dollar, nobody protects you like Allstate. Are you in good hands? By American Airlines. Refined accommodations provided by the Conrad Chicago, where tailored service and contemporary amenities meet to enhance the unique individuality of each guest. I'm the fourth string quarterback, but due to a pregame meal of all-you-can-eat calamari, now I'm the first string quarterback. But I'm also a transfer student, so I'm a little lost. And if you've got cut-rate insurance, your jacked-up rates might make you sick. So get accident forgiveness from Allstate and be better protected from mayhem, like me. Dollar for dollar, nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. I might get you here at Clear Choice. Why? Because I got to show you something. When I got dental implants, it took three years. But here, you get implants and new teeth in just one day without bone grafts. This place is incredible. They're a real team. They have an oral surgeon and a restorative dentist. Here's a 3D CAT scan. It's like giving docs x-ray vision. They even have a lab where they make your teeth. So listen to the coach. Don't suffer like I did. Come to Clear Choice. For a free consultation with 3D CAT scan, call 312-939-8990. Walter e. This weekend only at Walter E. Smith, save 40 to 90% on furniture like this beautiful new home for your flat screen. It's the final days of the in-store warehouse sale. Save 40 to 90%. Plus, take a 15% cash discount. Plus, go to smith.com to print your $500 bonus coupon. And you can still custom order for holiday delivery. Sale ends Monday. Walter e. Smith. You dream it with building. This is a 19-foot subalpine fur. This year, we have our own personal Santa. We've done the whole cardboard reindeer thing, so, you know. It's a 60s postmodern gingerbread house. It's worth it. In a season marked by overindulging and overspending. I'll wait here for him. Acura introduces the concept of oversaving. Test drive a new Acura during the Season of Reason sales event. Take advantage of attractive lease rates on the 2011 Acura MDX for well-qualified customers. From the Airy Crown Theater in Chicago, your hosts for the evening, Tom Dreesen and Mike Adamant. He was probably more of a ringmaster than he was a head football coach. Ladies and gentlemen, the coach, Mike Ditka, come on out. His greatest antagonist, a guy who proved that you could have fun and win at the same time, the Pumpkin QB, Jim McMahon. gentlemen this is the last chance probably you'll all get to talk about what really happened in 1985 and coach we're gonna start things off with you you have said this on many many occasions but I'd like for you to explain to the audience why you thought that this team was a team that had great character but also had great characters well, they were. I really, they were just a group of guys who went out and did their job. They, they were 
we talked about Grabowski's, but they, they epitomized what it was. They understood what they wanted. I think from the beginning when I got there, there were a lot of good football players on that team when I got there. But the other ones that weren't there, we filled in, and we got some other guys. And once we got going, it was pretty good to watch. I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I was in the right place at the right time. I can remember the day that Coach Landry said, listen, Mr. Hallis wants to talk to you. I thought he was going to find me again. But <laughs> instead, I, I fly to Chicago, and uh, he, he, he made me the head coach. And he told me at that time, too, that he was keeping the whole defensive staff and everything. I didn't care. It didn't matter to me. I wanted an opportunity to do what I dreamed about doing was coaching the Chicago Bears. That's all. So it all worked out in the long run. It all worked out. Jim, Jim, I know today, and even back then, you had great respect for Coach Ditka, but why did you just drive him crazy day after day? It was, it was like it was designed. It, you planned it. Every, every single night, you'd come up with a different plan to, to make him nuts. I didn't, I didn't do anything to make him nuts. I did, I did things that I thought would help our team win. Tell me the oh. truth. We want the truth, and he can handle the truth. He couldn't call plays. That's all. <laughs> Mike was a tight end, and he called plays like a tight end, okay? <laughs> Mongo, what was so special about it for you? Let me tell the audience about my precursor to greatness, my first bear practice. <laughs> Didn't know what Buddy Ryan looked like, but I met him that day. I'm out at practice getting ready. This little fat man walks up to me. <laughs> He comes up to me and says, well, 76, you've been working out because I'm going to work your butt off today. I said, yeah, I got this big black dog. We've been jogging. I'm in shape, coach. He said, oh, yeah, 76, we'll find out. So after his 110 gassers at his boot camp training camps, I'm bent over just starting to dry heave. Oh, you know that stitch in your side? I hear that smart ass walk up behind me. You know what he says? Shoot, 76, we should have signed the freaking dog. <laughs> You would not be where you are today without the presence of a guy who's made it here. Wow. He's been waiting a long time to see you guys. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what this man was all about. We're going to come at you, and we're going to hit your quarterback until you get another one in. Trying to lose the horses now. We're going to keep coming, and we're going to keep you guessing, and we're going to keep you thinking. We're not ducking and dodging. We're going to have fun because the 46 defense was as physical and as nasty as, as you want to get. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Buddy Ryan. Ladies and gentlemen, you just saw history in the making because I believe that is the first time that you and Buddy have hugged since. No, no, we, no, no, that's not true. We hugged, we hugged uh, this morning and we hugged this afternoon and we hugged tonight. <laughs> and we'll hug tomorrow. That's still 25 years, Coach. That's the closest they've been since the shower in Miami 25 years ago. <laughs> Why was there such a rift between you two, or was there? I don't think there was. I mean, I, my job was to coach the defense, and uh, I did that, and did it superbly. <laughs> well, we know for a fact, and, and now fans are starting to get the drift too, that there was an argument of sorts that happened in the middle of that dreadful game against the, the Miami Dolphins. What went on with the eraser buddy and what happened at halftime? i tell you, uh, to me, I never know that it happened, and I don't think it did happen. I think some writer made up a damn story to sell a newspaper. <laughs> When Ming came to Chicago, uh, you had been cut by New England, and you criminal needed, element they called it. Criminal me. element. Uh, that's your words, not mine. But I'm just saying, you know, Buddy 
knew that Ming had, had a huge upside, but he wanted to challenge him. And he would do crap like, you know, he'd say, uh, you know, on Friday night, all right, guys, I don't mind if uh, he'd tell uh, McMichael, I don't mind if you go out and get drunk, but don't take the players with you. Stuff like that, you know. And then Ming would be like Sunday morning, couldn't wait to tear somebody's ass because he wanted to play great, to prove it to Buddy that he's one of those guys. Buddy is part of the Chicago Bears lore and was the defensive coordinator that year because of a conversation that Mike had with the then general manager of the Chicago Bears, who's with Tom Dreesen right now. Tom? Yeah, I'm standing here with Jerry Venisi, former general manager of the Chicago Bears. Hi, Tom. How are you? Jerry, tell us a story. Tell us a story about uh, a call you called Mike Dick, I think, into the office about something. You want to relate it? Buddy was signed by Coach Alice first before Mike was signed what, about three weeks later as head coach. And uh, actually at the time, I, th I think Buddy and I both thought he was going to name him head coach. Well, Mike came in, and after about three years, there was a certain tension, regardless of what they're saying tonight, <laughs> between, <clears throat> between the offense and defense. And it was kind of like us against them all the time, whether it was practice or whatever. So the 84 season's over, Buddy's three-year contract is up, and I said to Mike, I said, now's your chance if you want to bring in another defensive coordinator, and he didn't. He acknowledged Buddy's talent and what we had, and he thought he had which, what was special, and he wanted to keep it together. So, Jerry Benicio. Thank you very much. It, it, it takes you a long time to figure things out, but we really had two head coaches, period. It, it's that simple. I mean, you could cut it any way you want to. We had two head coaches. What a guy. But, Buddy, as great as that defense was, and as great as the great Walter Payton and the offense and Jim and the offensive line and all the pieces were, we don't win a Super Bowl without this guy right here. Make no mistake about it. Just understand that. Understand that. And you know what I'm thinking? We've got to do something. And Ming and I came up with a couple of ideas. And... You know, oh, don't buddy, think we don't have props. In, I, I know you live in Kentucky and you haven't been around, but Coach has been doing pretty well for himself here in the last few years. Oh. And he's got restaurants and he's got barbecue sauce. And he, and he, and he actually has a, a vineyard and they produce some of the finest wine known to mankind. Mike Ditka's Cabernet Sauvignon. And I just want you to have that as a token. Well, no, you could have got him the best one. Well, well, that's for Buddy. And then, and, the way, and then we're thinking, well, wait a minute, Buddy, Buddy needs to give Mike something. And so, you know, Buddy's got the horses, he's got the Kentucky stable, and I'm thinking maybe with some of the finest stuff that Buddy's horses can manufacture, <laughs> Buddy Ryan's Kentucky horse <laughs> but When the 85 Bears went to the Super Bowl, he went to Sears and got us the whole the whole uniform. The plastic helmet, the Walter Payton 34. After that, I've always been a Bears fan. Everybody was proud to say that they were from Chicago. And if they weren't from Chicago, they lied about it and said they were from Chicago. Just like Al Capone was in the 1920s, here in 1980s, the Bears, with everything, it's always did go. Bear down, Chicago Bears. And let them know why you're wearing the crown. Bear to pride and joy of it. Illinois, Chicago Bears, Bear Town. That's how we celebrate. I'm a satellite dish. The only reason you got me was for football. But for today's game, I'm a little fuzzy. So you tried to fix me. You just made me loose. Newsflash. If you have cut rate insurance, you might not be covered for this. Forget Allstate and protect your house and car from mayhem like me. Dollar for dollar, nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. We're here, delivering innovative health care with a unique patients-first approach. We're here, progressing state-of-the-art robotic and minimally invasive techniques. 
we're here, serving our communities with our convenient network of satellite locations. We're here, advancing medicine with our new cancer center. Mercy Hospital, caring for you and keeping Chicago well since 1852. Discover more at mercy-chicago.org. <coughs> Any cough can ruin a day. Whether it's a wet cough caused by mucus. <laughs> this is paradise, my sweet. The wetter, the better. Or an irritating dry cough. <laughs> this is the life. The drier, the better. Maximum strength Mucin XDM breaks up mucus and quiets coughs, both wet and dry. Mucin XDM! And only Mucin XDM gets rid of mucus and quiets coughing, wet or dry, for 12 hours. 12 hours? Mucin X in, mucus out. Hello? We noticed things have changed a lot since the first cell phone. Everything except the wireless industry. So U.S. Cellular is introducing the Belief Project and the first rewards program that gives you points for everything from ringtones to, you guessed it, new phones. Fixing wireless one project at a time. The Belief Project from U.S. Cellular. Second quarter, everybody. All right, let's bring out our 85 Super Bowl champions. First of all, number 22, Double D, Dave Dorson. Number 85, the silky one, Dennis McKinnon. He's informative, he's bright. He was a great, great member of the 7085 Bears, Tommy Thayer. Before we, we talk to you guys, there's a reason why we have that number up here, obviously. There is nobody else like Sweetness, and I'm gonna use my Comcast remote and show you why. We made a wager that uh, we would be the first one to, uh, to break down in tears, and I was the first one to say that I wouldn't, and I was the first one to say how strong I was and everything else, but uh, as it goes to show that a lot of times when you're amongst your, your peers, such as these great athletes over here, you try to be something that you're not. And after hearing my son get up here and talk, I don't care if I lose the bet. John Madden spoke of Walter as a treasure. And that's the word I remember 10 years later. And we are very grateful that he is our treasure. and every one of us fans and coaches and teammates alike desperately miss him and we miss him every single day. And I think, Tommy, you're a pretty good person to start with. Just tell us your thoughts about how in awe you were of number 34. He just was my hero. And, and I was a kid who, Joel A. Catholic, all we did was run the ball. And all you knew about was running backs. And all you knew about was greatness. And when I got to be able to come and play for the Bears and I sat in the huddle, I was so excited to sit and look at Walter Payton that I had a hard time listening to the play and realizing your responsibility and your assignment because I would sit in the huddle and I would just look at him and I would kind of stare at him and I was, and I, it was, it was the first couple weeks it was so hard because I was so excited to be around him. I never grew out of the admiration I had for Walter. 
Coach knows this on Monday morning. I love watching films because I make, make sure my guy never made the play. And when you see them stutter step, long runs, he set up McKinnon because I'm going to knock somebody out. And that, to me, was the greatest gift I ever had playing for this organization. I love the block. And I had a block for 34, so what a great gift that is. You had the great opportunity to play with uh, Walter in several Pro Bowls over in Hawaii. And then when the regular season was over, obviously it was a different Walter Payton. Yeah. Our very first day, we have media day. And as interviews are starting, I'm beginning to sweat. And, you know, I mean, things are just heating up. But, but the way the heat is coming, is coming from, from down here. <laughs> what, what Walter would do is that he would put unscented liquid heat on each of our jocks. <laughs> So oh it, it gave new meaning to the, to the term that Singletary used to talk about. You know, when we, we'd line up in our defense, he'd talk about we got to get our nuts hot. I would be in the office late at night, and I would get some strange phone calls. <laughs> it was from an Hispanic-speaking woman, and uh, she said her name was Yolanda, and she kept saying, geez, I'd like to meet you at so-and-so and so-and-so. Well, thank God I never went. <laughs> But, Diana, you believe that? So I, I'm out on the practice field one day, and I'm watching practice, and I got my arms folded, and I hear this voice behind me, Coach, will you meet me at the hotel? <laughs> <laughs> I say one thing. I, I don't believe in these greatest things that they put out. There is no such thing as the greatest. We all have a time in history. We all have a place in history. There was no better football player in the history of this game than Walter Payton. When you talk about the whole package, the whole package, I don't care. I saw Jimmy Brown, I saw them all. Nobody did what he did. Behind every great man, there's of course a great woman. Would you say hello to Walter Payton's wife, Connie Payton? Connie, would you Connie, what do you feel? I, re I didn't expect to cry again, but uh, there's so many wonderful stories. He, he definitely was a special man. He truly was in so many ways. I mean, he was a great husband, a wonderful father, and I, I, may, I guess you would have to ask the kids about that, right? Thanks, Connie. It is so tough to make it on your own when your dad is such a big star, but Jared Payton has done that and more. Jared, biggest thing you've ever learned from your dad? I think the biggest thing is um, giving back. I mean, that was his big thing. That's what me, my mom, and my sister are carrying on is is that he was very blessed to have the things that he got, and, uh, but he never forgot where he came from. And, um, you know, he, it, he, was, he was a special person. I know he's shining down right now and looking at all these fans and all these people sitting in here, but his biggest thing was team and family. And um, anytime that you can have someone so special, um, I, I was lucky to to be around him for 19 years of my life. It's, it's just very special. Even though he's not physically here, he's here, just backstage. I was just sitting there and I looked down at my, at my, at my, at my watch and it's 8.34. He's here. No question, no question. <laughs> Thanks, Jared. He couldn't be here tonight because of some serious health reasons. He came up with the great line, I was big when I was little. We, we, of course, are talking about the fridge, William Perry. So we went to South Carolina to see him. In these rolling hills of South Carolina is William Perry's hometown. He grew up here in Aiken and lives about eight miles north of downtown, just off Interstate 20. In a brick home, he built with his own hands. Perry is recovering from Guillain-Barre syndrome, an immune system illness that temporarily immobilized him and then nearly killed him 
when it induced pneumonia in 2009. It attacked my muscles and everything, and then it just mainly almost just paralyzed me. But now I'm back up, moving around, getting around, doing doing things like I you know like I used to. Just a little, a little slower at times. But Throughout our 30-minute interview, up, Perry did not want to dwell on his illness or the financial stress it caused, concentrating on his glory year and the reason he became a national obsession in 1985. The refrigerator. It just blew up and blew up all out of out of proportion, and you know we all we all laughed about it and we enjoyed it. And it was fun. It was fun to us. All for refrigerator, stand up and holler. This is Dick Stockton and Wayne Walker here on a beautiful day in San Francisco, and they say maybe the largest crowd ever at Candlestick Park. He called uh, my number and everything, and said, you know, big guy, you're gonna run, you're gonna run the ball, you're gonna score and everything. And I'm sitting up there looking at him and stuff. Yeah, okay, fine with me. And the handoff to William Perry playing in the backfield. William the Refrigerator Perry carried the ball. He just kept calling, kept calling the plays each and every, each and every week when we had a game. I was blocking it and I was running the ball. Handoff to Perry, oh. crushes the right side of the line, touchdown! I was happy, the team was happy, so we was having fun. And Perry is happy again, recovering from his illness, a convalescence aided by the Gridiron Greats Assistance Fund, a nonprofit group that provides assistance for former NFL players. Their work is evident in Perry's enduring smile and booming voice. I want to thank all of y'all for coming out and remembering the 85 Bears. We thank you and we appreciate it that you remember us and we are so appreciate it. Man, how could we forget? And Coach, you just said it, you know, thanks to the Gridiron Greats Assistance Fund, we've been able to help uh, William a whole heck of a lot. A little bit, I'll tell you what really happened. Uh, Michael Dean Perry, his brother is, is a saint, it really is. Uh, he really has taken care of this kid because he was in bad, bad shape. And when I saw him about a year ago out in Rosemont, He's a thousand times better right there than he was the day we saw him. So I, Michael Dean is a saint, believe me. One of the most wonderful, cordial, funny human beings you'd ever want to meet. He didn't say much, but when he said something, it really counted and it really meant something. And I know that Hamp used to call him Biscuit because he was a biscuit shy of 350 pounds. <laughs> you had a nickname for him as well, yes? Oh, yeah, we all did. I called him Big Bill. But um, <laughs> uh, at all times, Fridge had this cooler in the back of his car. And it always, always uh, chilled after practice with a, a case of silver bullets, Coors silver bullets. <laughs> and, um, and Fridge would, you know, he'd pop the can, he had the biggest hands in the world, and he'd just squeeze it and suck, and, you know, that would be it. <laughs> one like that, it's done. <laughs> Off to the next one. And so I, I, I said to him, I said, Big Bill, you got to help me out. You know, I'm just a little economist from Notre Dame. But if you're going to drink a case of beer, what difference does it make whether it's regular beer or light beer? <laughs> He was on the goal line, and he tried to jump one time like Walter, and you told him, don't do that anymore, Bill. <laughs> and he said, he said, Tom Thumb, Coach Dick had told me not to jump like Walter anymore, so watch your back. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. I'm your lucky team, Flag. We've gone through 14 seasons together. But in flag years, I'm like 130. Now, I'm just holding on by a thread. If you've got cut rate insurance, you could be dealing with this mess yourself. So get all state, where agents keep you protected from mayhem like me. Dollar for dollar, nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. 
Don't let your back pain take your freedom. Call the Illinois Back Institute for your free consultation and discover how our breakthrough treatment is helping people live pain-free. Like former pro football star Dan Hampton. I couldn't tie my shoes. I couldn't I couldn't sleep. I, I mean, it was, uh, it was madness. Our non-surgical progressive disc rejuvenation developed by Dr. Jeff Wittenheimer rehydrates and reverses the effects of herniated and degenerative discs. He has an awful lot of cutting edge, innovative ways of taking the weight load off and allowing you to work the muscles without, you know, the full body weight. Our unique system relieves pressure. We then rehydrate the discs, letting oxygen and nutrients flow back in. Dr. Jeff has helped people of all ages relieve their chronic back pain. Call 866-693-0955 to schedule your appointment or log on to IllinoisBackPain.com. Your initial consultation is always free. Call the Illinois Back Institute now at 866-693-0955 and get your life back. It's the holiday sale at Famous Footwear. Buy one pair of shoes, get another pair half off. Make today famous is true. Spectacular savings on the brand names you love. Famous Footwear. Make today famous. My grandmother was very much into classical music, was a piano teacher, um, had the record player, but the one record she did have that was a little out of place that she got just for her grandkids was the 85 Bears Shuffling Crew. You go to church at Holy Name Cathedral on Sunday before the game and the whole church congregation was in Bears jerseys and Bears shirts and... I'll never forget, I went home and the score was 46-10 and back then I used to like to play the lotto a lot. And so I tried to play 4610, and the machine wouldn't accept the number. I guess everybody in Chicago had played that. So I don't know. Go figure. For his efforts in enriching others' lives and giving back to the Chicagoland community, Allstate is proud to present the 2010 Allstate Legacy Award. You've probably guessed who it is, but let's watch a short video. See that? That's your IQ, buddy. Zero. Hold up. Turn over. Son. No, I'd rather talk to him. <laughs> Coach, uh, we know that you were born in Aliquippa, Pennsylvania, yep. right next to my hometown, Beaver Falls. Yep. But I don't think there's any mistake that Chicago is your hometown. Is. And your commitment and dedication to this community for six decades is unparalleled. On behalf of all state, 70,000 all staters, we're incredibly proud to present you with the first annual Legacy Award. Well, thank you, I, and I appreciate it. Thank you. You know, I just want to say one thing. I know what Lou Gehrig meant when he said, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. Thank you. No, thank you, coach. Thank you. And let's bring out our next group of Chicago Bear greats. Number 45, the cerebral safety, Gary Fencing. The guy he would hate to have cover, Speedy Willie. In Chicago Bear history, Jimbo Coverts. He came into the league as a safety, and he wound up being one of the best shutdown corners in the National Football League, L.A. Mike Richardson.
Good to see all you guys. Gary will tell you that there was a milestone in that Super Bowl year where you guys really kind of believed. Oh, absolutely, Mike. I mean, for me, uh, I think the Dallas Cowboy game. I mean, Mike, you said San Francisco. I, that was a really big game. Uh, matter of fact, that 84 championship game, I had two interceptions the first half. I thought, I own Joe Montana. Got her butts kicked. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> but the, I, I really thought, I had a friend come over from uh, Asia, from Hong Kong, and I said, you know, if, if we go down and beat the Dallas Cowboys, I think we have a chance of going to the Super Bowl. And being born and raised in Chicago, yeah, that's hard. You know, that's really hard to say you think you have a chance to do that. Uh, and we went down there and just played a, a great game. And I didn't realize that Jim McMahon didn't start that, didn't even play that game. So uh, we took it to him, and it was an important game. And it was the earliest that Buddy had ever pulled the defense, or at least me, out. And I came to him and said, I need one more series. Because I hadn't beaten the Cowboys. That was my 10th year in the NFL. I hadn't beaten them in any preseason, regular season, or postseason game. So I wanted to really kill the Cowboys. You know, I remember after the game, and, and, I, and I didn't feel good because Tom was my, my buddy and my mentor, but he came up to me after the game, and, and here's what he said. He said, boy, I knew you guys were good, but, but I didn't know you were that good, really. That's all he said. Hell, I, you know, I, I moved on down the line because we were pretty good that day. I would say so. Hey, you know, we talked about the fridge earlier. How much, how much fun was it to block for the fridge? Um, I just tried to get out of the way. I mean, I, I did. I mean, you were kind of defenseless being in front of them, right? So, and you, it was hard to have your head on a swivel. So uh, I tried to just get as low as I possibly could and, and, you know, block the guy I had to block and then get out of the way as quick as I could. And because, you know, 330 pounds hitting you from behind when you're in a defenseless position is definitely going to hurt. Well, and it's not the kind of thing you can practice during, you know, during the course of the week because if you land in your once, that's the end of it, yeah, right? Yeah, you're done. Yeah, you're done. <laughs> You're and our Tom Dreesen is with another member of that great Chicago Bear defense. Tommy? Speaking of that, I'm standing here with Sean Gale, ladies and gentlemen. Sean Gale. Yeah, buddy! Sean, what does this night mean to you? Well, I think anytime the guys get together, it's a, such a special feeling we all get. I mean, you may not realize this, but when the NFL went on strike in 1987, we were the only team that did not have one player cross the picket line. And now, that's a testament to the uh, camaraderie that we enjoyed. And, and to this day, I'm sure some of you fans have asked some of the guys, what do you miss most about the game? And I'm sure they all said the same thing, we miss that camaraderie. Because we worked hard at a common goal, we cried together, we bled together, we struggled together, and when you succeed the way we did, for the city of Chicago, there's nothing like it. Uh, Willie, you were like one of Jim's favorite receivers, certainly the, the go-to long guy, that was for sure, uh, great speed and everything like that, but how many times did he, did he call off plays that were sent from the sideline, that were sent from Mike? I, I have to say, I've, I've had the pleasure to play with a lot of quarterbacks, and Jim was probably the, the smartest quarterback I've ever played with from the standpoint of understanding defenses, reading defenses. And he, in the huddle, it was, as Jimbo would tell you, uh, he would say, look, guys, if the defense does this, I'm going to do this. Will he be ready? Dennis, be ready. And you had an idea going out there. There's a, a, a possibility you're going to get the ball. So he would change the, the, the play whenever he thought was necessary. If, I mean, they go over the plays during the week. If the defense played zone, he would throw a certain play. So he understood the offense very well. You know, the, one of the things about football is that, uh, you know, once it's all over, it's not an easy uh, transition to go from football to regular life and trying to find a niche for yourself. And nobody knows that better than L.A. Mike Richardson, and Mike's got a special redemption story. Michael? Well, let me say this. Uh, I, I, I found out uh, early in my career uh, that Coach Dicker didn't like losing. And uh, when... <laughs> when, when <laughs> We, I found out when uh, any time we lost, uh, his vocabulary kind of shrank. So you know, his, his words were, you know, I can't repeat some of the words. You know, one of the hardest things to do uh, at at, a, at my own personal uh, in my own personal life was at a time when things weren't going so great to uh, call somebody and ask for help, and uh, I had to call uh, Mike Dicker and. Um, I don't know what made me think of his name because I had to tell him that, you know, I was losing in life. 
and I knew he didn't like losing. And so I was expecting him to start kicking and <laughs> cussing and fussing. And, uh, you know, he just, uh, I called him and said, hey, man, I need some help. And uh, he said, you know what? Uh, he started coaching at that moment. Hey, go here, do this, do and You know, and it was like, wow, I, you know, I, not, I really heard exactly what I needed to hear uh, to change my life. And, uh, in, in particular, are you willing to? Yeah. yeah. So. What happened and that uh, you needed Mike's help and... Uh, well, I, you know, I uh, experienced a drug addiction. So, you know, when I went into um, a negative state of mind and, you know, I uh, felt like I was trapped and couldn't get out. So I called Mike and said, hey, you know, what, what can I do and uh, what do I need to do? And, uh, you know, I need some help. And, uh, you know, Mike gave me some instructions and uh, it's almost like uh, that energy from that side of the phone. He was just full of energy and went right into my phone, into my heart. And, um, you know, I'm up and running to this day, and, uh, you know, I just really got to thank him. Yeah. Problems are one thing in life. How you overcome the problems is another thing. He's overcome his problems, and you know he become very productive, and that's that's the most important thing. But it's great, Mike. It's great to see you, and you look wonderful, don't it? Sure it? does. Looks Mike like you can play. Greatest Douglas fur. I'm the perfect shape. I'm the perfect color. My scent, like making love to a lumberjack. But halfway home, my twine gets loose. <laughs> and your cut rate insurance might not pay for this. So get all state, where you can save money and be better protected from mayhem, like me. Dollar for dollar, nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. But during the holidays, you'll save even more with special deals on name brands. For savings this holiday, Meyer is the answer. This Saturday only, save up to $10 with coupon and minimum purchase. Meyer, Higher standards, lower prices. These days, you need more than a little help. VisionWorks is 100% behind that with 50% off a complete pair of glasses. For a limited time, save on frames and lenses for the whole family. Choose from our top designer frames or our stylish and affordable private brand collection. Also, get 50% off no-line bifocal, transitions, or polarized lenses. Don't forget to use or lose your flex spending benefits. Come in today. VisionWorks. Why pay more? Hi, Jill. Jingle bells, your gift smells, you really laid an egg. I'll be standing in a line to return it at the store. Hey! See ya. Buy a $50 gift card, get a $10 bonus card at DSW. Designer shoes, warehouse prices. Where do you find the energy to give someone flight or chase life's treasures? Introducing Alive, a complete and potent multivitamin packed with over 20 fruits and vegetables. Alive, a new kind of multivitamin that brings energy to life. But during the holidays, you'll save even more with special deals on name brands. For savings this holiday, Meyer is the answer. This Saturday only, save up to $10 with coupon and minimum purchase. Meyer, Higher standards, lower prices. Buddy Ryan, come on back out. Jim McMahon, Otis Wilson with the Super Bowl trophy. And a guy who can still kick today, Kevin Butler. Another conspicuous absence tonight is uh, a guy who couldn't be here for obvious reasons. He was the straw that stirred the drink, so to speak, on the defensive side of the football. And he is currently the head coach of the San Francisco 49ers. Samurai Mike Singletary has something to say to all of his teammates and his former coaches. Well, when I think about uh, Coach Ditka and, and, and some of the things that he did, it's, it's amazing. And Coach, every now and then, I kind of go off. And um, I, it's part of you. I, I know it is. Um, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get better at it, but it's not going away. Um, Buddy Ryan, you know, the, the, 
the hours and hours that, that we spent together looking at film and, and uh, you teaching me about football. I, I appreciate that. It's just common sense and at the same time having fun. Uh, both of you guys are like my dad. You know that. I love both of you. And, um, you know, it was just a special team, a special group of guys. Of course, we all miss Walter. Um, you know, he was right in the center of it all. Um, but the 85 Bears, um, hopefully uh, this year I, I, can, I can show you something that you'll appreciate um, in our team. Uh, just know that I love every one of you and I miss you. I wish I was there. Why was he the perfect guy, buddy? Why was Mike Singletary the perfect guy to, to run your defense? Well, he was smart. He came out of Baylor, uh, and uh, he had a lot of, a lot of qualities. He uh, wasn't in good enough shape to run a mile and a half that we had to run. But, so I, I, had to get, either, I had to get up. I had to get up at seven o'clock in the morning and go run his little lad. <laughs> Otis, where do you think this team belongs in terms of defensively? In terms of the great defenses have played in the National Football League, where do you think its place is? Well, well, first let me say this: there was nobody on this earth that would compare to what we did in that one single year. We were the most dominant team in football, and, and you have to contribute that to that man sitting right there because he was just always, you know, just say, Otis, how you feel today? Because we're going to turn him loose. And you just say, hey, I'm ready, Boo Joe. Let's go get him. <laughs> <laughs> who was the guy who started the woo, 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 woo? Well, I, I, I got to admit it, it. You know, Dave was probably the first person that really made note of it. But, you know, it was, it, it was infectious, and, and we just, just started doing it. So I got to give Double D, well, wherever you are, D, give you credit for that. Well, I'll tell you, another damn good dog that the Chicago Bears had, the Georgia Bulldog, Kevin Butler, is here tonight. Buddy once called you a wasted draft pick. Well, that was the first time we met. I mean, Buddy really didn't... <laughs> But he really didn't get to know me. I mean, that was in the first few seconds, you know. It's like a bad prom date. And, uh, I walked into uh, Hallis Hall after being drafted, and uh, Steve Kayser picked me up. Uh, it was two days after the draft. The first person I met was, he, he introduced me to Buddy. He goes, Kevin, it, it, this is Buddy Ryan, our defense coordinator. Hey, Coach Ryan, how you doing? Who, who are you? I said, I'm uh, Kevin Butler, the kicker. He goes... Uh, we wasted a draft pick on you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about Super Bowl XX. Le bon temps roule. Let the good times roll. And nobody had a better time than number nine. Fact, fiction, you fill us in here. We had everything from acupuncturists to Pete Rozelle headbands to helicopters spotting, you know, drop drawers. Uh... You guys, it was like, hide the women and children. Oh, my God, here come the Chicago Bears. We had a good time. Uh, well, I did up until Wednesday. And, and one of your fellow reporters came out and said that I had called all the women of, of New Orleans sluts. And uh, it screwed I called it up the, for all and said of the us. men were stupid. <laughs> yeah, we were, like I said, we were having a great time all week, you yeah, know. But we it had no that. curfew. Yeah. It was beautiful. And then uh, this story comes out, and I start getting death threats for the next couple of days. And, you know, nobody wanted to stand by me at practice. <laughs> I was wearing a different number, you know, but I was scared to, I was scared to death. You know, I don't really remember a hell of a lot about the game. You know, I actually, I actually called the first play of the game the wrong way. I, I put Dennis in the wrong motion, and I don't think it had anything to do with the fumble, but, you know, it wasn't the right call. But uh, I was just happy to get the hell out of New Orleans alive. Jim's roommate down in New Orleans was one of the Bears' fine offensive linemen, guard Kurt There's Becker. There's my boy, Kurt. All the years I've known Jim McMahon, I've known a lot of women that wanted to sleep with him, but only one man got that opportunity, his roommate. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, Kurt. He's a sexy man looking at him. <laughs> Kurt. Hi, Gloria. You and I both know Jimmy. He's certifiably crazy. I mean, you know he is. He's, he's, he's certified, right? Well, some guys try to be whacked out, but he is totally whacked out. <laughs> I mean, 
Just look at him tonight. You know, look at that jacket he has on. Um, this is a tribute to my colorful teammates that I played with. Hey, Kurt, real quick, real quick. Jim talked about the death threats. Uh, were they real, and did you get scared? Well, I, I didn't get scared. The only thing I got scared about was watching him get uh, needles in his rear end when he got acupuncture every night. That was a little scary. <laughs> that little guy from Tokyo will never be the same, I'm telling you. Because I, I wouldn't get home till like, you know, 2 in the morning, and he's, he's sleeping at my front door, you know, at the, at the hotel door. He's asleep in front of the room. i poke you. I said, okay. <laughs> so I, I'd go in the room. And I, you know, I'd had a few pops, and you know, when you have, you get that beer gash, you know? Last Thanksgiving, about two million people tried to deep fat fry their turkey. Fifteen succeeded in setting their houses on fire. At Christmas, there was a lot of driving over the river and through the woods and a little bit of skidding on the ice and taking out Grandma's garage door. So while you're celebrating, Allstate will be standing by. Trouble never takes a holiday. Neither should your insurance. That's Allstate, Stan. Are you in good hands? I'm Mike Ditka. You might know about my three Super Bowl wins, but what you don't know is I had a problem. Bad teeth. So I got dental implants. It was a great solution, but it took three years. Now there's clear choice. The Dental Implants Super Center. You get dental implants and new teeth in just one day. Look at this. Ha ha. So listen to the coach. Don't make the mistake I made. If you want dental implants, you want clear choice. For a free consultation with 3D CAT scan, call 312-939-8990. If you dreamed up the perfect suite at Soldier Field, where would it be? It'd have to be on the 50-yard line. With some fine leather recliners like this one. Two of them. Walter Eastman. Custom furniture. Win a pair of tickets to the best seats in the house. Stop in any Smith store or visit smith.com to enter. Walter E. Smith. You dream it, we build Walter it. Walter Custom furniture. Walter E. Smith. You dream it, we build it. Rob and Allison, weeknights at 5, 6, and 10 on NBC5 News. I'm a teenage girl. My BFF Becky texts and says she's kissed Johnny. Well, that's a problem because I like Johnny. Now, I'm emotionally compromised and whoopsies. I'm all, OMG, Becky's not even hot. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. So get Allstate. You can save money and be better protected from mayhem like me. Dollar for dollar, nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. I was a senior in high school, and uh, we had this master plan that we were going to cut study hall to come down to the rally, thinking that nobody would notice us. We went through so much trouble to get here, and I am five foot nothing, so of course I just kind of got swept in the crowd. I could see nothing. I was frostbitten by the end of it, and got detention. I gave so many high fives during the course of that Super Bowl game that I literally suffered a bone chip in my right elbow. I was in a cast for a couple of weeks thereafter. Uh, I said I'm only going to get one tattoo in my life, and it's got to be the bear. I lived through the 85 season, and I was so excited. It was such a great year for them. I'll never see another team like that again, never. I just want to tell a story I think might sum up this football team. Um, the only game that we lost uh, against Miami. I come in the huddle, and I've been keeping track of Walter's uh, rushing yards that game. And he was going for his ninth or tenth hundred yard game in a row, which was going to be at the time of an NFL record. Mike had given me a, a pass play. I said, let's get this man the yards that he deserves for this record. I'd give it, I'd give it to Walt. He busts up there for about 15 yards, and now he needs about another 10 yards for this record. So. Mike Burns, our last time out. He gives me another pass. So <laughs> I go back in the huddle. I said, boys, this is going to hit the fan now. <laughs> 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 
But we are running this ball again. And we get up there, and uh, I look over to Mike, and he's taking his headset off. He's throwing it down. His clipboard goes flying. I hand it to Wally, he busts up in there for another 15. I said, all right, boys, now let's try to win the game. But, but those guys, to a man, we got him in his, his record, and that, that pretty much sums up this team. They were very unselfish. We played for each other, and we kicked ass. State Glory Days, the legends of the 85 Chicago Bears, has been brought to you by Allstate. Dollar for dollar, nobody protects you like Allstate. Are you in good hands? By American Airlines. Refined accommodations provided by the Conrad Chicago, where tailored service and contemporary amenities meet to enhance the unique individuality of each guest. Awesome. Great time. Loved every minute of it. Great show. I'm proud of every one of these guys and the coaches. And, and yeah, I think you saw how the people, they, they really loved it. Great time. Fierce. Yeah. It was outstanding. It was a lifetime event. I, I was blown away. <laughs> Up and I, I think they actually... See, oh, they actually... Oh, oh, see. <laughs> It'll never happen again. This is history. It was great to see everybody again. All of them old timers. And you know, Dick, uh, unbelievable. Dick it was hilarious, so was McMahon. It was fantastic. Here it is 25 years later. You know, I'm about to turn 50, and, and that, you know, appreciation to the work that, you know, you put forward, that the people still appreciate that. I'm really never one for not words, but I, I, I'm, uh, as you can see, I'm, I'm, I'm stuttering. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. it. Cut, it's a wrap. <laughs> Hey, that's a lot.